Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now till this point we have seen some basics on Python and we have talked about array as well. But we want to do one more example here. So the previous assignment was about taking the values from the user and that's where the problem starts, right? How can you create an array where the values will be coming from the user? Because when you say you, the, your values will be coming from the user, you don't know the size of the array. So if you don't know the size of the array, how can you create the array? Right, so in this example, we'll do that. So we'll create an array, a blank array, and then we will ask a user to enter the values. And at the end, we'll ask a user, hey, you want to search the element? And if a user says, okay, I want to search for the element, and then let's say, if a user says, hey, I want to search for number five, and tell me the index value of it. We'll be doing that example here. What I'm going to do here is very simple. We want to take the, we want to create an array and we want to take the values from the user. So step one, we need to create an array, right? So I would say ARR is equal to, now this ARR, I want it to be a blank array. And the way you do that is by saying array. And then of course, right, when you work with array, you need to use, uh, you need to mention the type of the array, type of the values, right? So you will say I, and you will give a comma here. And then you have to mention the array values, but when, but then we want empty array, right? So we'll give a square back. So this is how you create an empty array. Now we have one small issue. We are using array, but we have we forgot to import the array module. So we'll say import, uh, not import. We'll say from array import. I want to import everything, so I will say star, right? So I want all the classes, all the functions, all the variables. We'll say star. Now once you got the array, I want to add the elements. So when you say you want to add the elements, you will be asking users to enter value repeatedly, right? So when you say we'll say hey user, enter next value, enter next value, enter next value. But how, how many times do we have to say that? So before asking for the values, we will ask for the length of the array. So we'll say, hey, hey user, how many values you need? So user says, hey, I want, I want to insert five values. Let's do that. So we'll say n, and in this, I want to ask for the length of the array. Uh, okay, so user will enter the value. We have to we have to use input function, but input will give you string. So we will convert that into integer. So we'll say int. And here we'll say input, and in this bracket you have to mention the uh, you have to mention the message, right? So I would say enter the length of the array, right? Now once you got the length, now the next step is I want to ask a user, hey user, enter the value you want to insert. But then I want to do that repeatedly, right? So I have to so if a user says, hey, I want to insert five values, I have to ask for the element five times. Now of course when you say you want to do something repeatedly, you have to use a for loop, right? Of course, while loop will do here, but I will use a for loop and I will use a variable i, i in. Now, when you say you want to go for five times, the best way is to go for range and the range would be five. We'll give a colon and enter. Now, every time this loop runs, I want to ask a user to enter the value and I will put that value in a variable x, right? So I would say x equal to, uh, the way you can ask a value is very simple. Again, the same thing, you need to use this function. I will just copy and paste it here. Now instead of saying enter the length of the array, we will change the message and we'll say enter the value, right? Or we can say enter the next value. This makes sense, right? So every time a user enters the value, that will go into x. And the same value x will go into array now. And the way you do that is by saying arr dot. How do we add values in the array? So for that, we have a function called as append, right? So we'll use append here. And every time you want to add the element, just pass x and your job is done. So your loop iterates and you will put the element in the array. Now, how will you verify this? So we'll, we'll go at the end and here we'll print the values of array. So we can directly print it. We can say print array. So this is one way you can directly print the array or you can use a for loop, right? Your choice. Uh, I will just run this code. I hope it will work. Okay, let me just verify. If I say F, uh, shift F10, you can see it is asking for the length. I would say, okay, I want to insert four values. Okay, now it is asking for the next value. So I would say this is 16. Uh, the next value is, let's say 20, and then we got 48, we got 21, and we got, let's say 10. So this is, this is these are my four values, right? Oh, it is going five times, that's bad. We, we said four, right? Why it's going five times? Because I made a small mistake, you know, we ignore something, my bad. Instead of saying range five, I should, I should have said n, right? Because we are asking for the length. My bad. Okay, let's do that again. Uh, asking for the length. I will say four. Enter the value 16, 20, 14, 52. You can see I've entered four values. The moment I say enter, we got four values, right? So that's your array and you, that's how you can take the info from the user. So every time a user enters a value, you just have to append it to the array. Okay, this works. Now what I'm gonna do is I want to ask a user to enter a value 
and then we will search for the index example if a user says uh, value of 14 then we need to print the index number of it which is in this case 2 right now there are two ways of doing this one manually and second by using some inbuilt functions now what do you think we should be going for manual first right so we'll go we'll do it manually first and then we'll see which function we can use to fetch it so how will you do it manually now when you say you want to get the index number what you have to do is let's say if a user says in value 14 so you have to check you need to compare is 14 is same as the first value of array if it is same you got the index number if it is not same shift just check for the second value is it is it matching no then shift i mean next one which is 14 and 14 matching yes so you got the answer right so every time you you run through the loop you have to increment the value right and that will be your index number so what i'm saying is just take a for loop in fact first of all we have to ask a user to enter a value right so we'll say we'll say a value val itself and we'll ask a user to enter the value so i will use the same uh, i would say enter the value for search Right, this is what we will print, we'll be asking the user. And with the, the moment a user enters a value that will go into value now, we will ask a you we will run a loop. We'll say i in array. The moment you you iterate this loop, you will check if i is equal to equal to the value which you have. Now, see this i is the value of this i is coming from a range right so the range would be 0 1 2 3 4 but this i here is not coming from the range the value is coming from the array itself uh, i know the we have the same uh, name so we'll say e okay instead of saying i will say e because this is how we represent right so i we can take it as an iterator or the counter variable and we will let's say e is an element right so so value of e will be coming from the array itself one one element so we are comparing if this e is matching with the val in case it if it is matching we will print the index number right so oh how do we know the index number here that's a confusion right now to maintain the index number we will use a counter variable we'll say k the initial value of k would be zero right so k will start with zero and every time this loop iterates we will increment the value of k so we'll say k plus is equal to one right so we are incrementing it but what if it is matching in that case you will print the value of k that's it so if, if, if it is matching we'll simply say break because we don't want to search ahead right if, if this matching that's it that's that's the end so we'll say break now i hope it will work let's verify i would say okay so what is happening once again is you are using a loop and the value of e will be coming from the array itself now if that e is matching with the value which our user inserted you will print the index number right which is k in this case and you will say break let's run this code and you can see it is asking for the length again i will say 4 and i will enter the value which is 14 uh, 52 98 36 and you can see we, we have entered four values and that's your array there now it is asking you for the value we, we, which you want to search for i want to search let's say 52 the moment i say enter you can see it says 1 because that's the index number for 52 right so this is how you can work with it right it's very simple you can try it out what i would suggest to you is after watching this video don't practice that by directly by watching the video after finishing watching the video okay you can pause it and try it by yourself don't look at the code because when you look at the code you you, you feel it's just simple but when you try it by yourself that's where the problem starts right so try it out uh, let me know in the comment section how it is going so that's how you uh, insert the value in the array that's how you search for it oh we are missing one more thing right how will you use functions here my bad uh, if you want to use function you don't have to do anything like this you simply say print and in this print you will use an array which you will use array and you will say a method called as index and just pass the value which is val you know you don't have to do anything else you don't have to use this uh, loop stuff you can simply say hey we have an array of five uh, let's insert the values some big values this time okay so you can see i've inserted these values and now it is asking you for the value which you want to search i want to search for 587 right which is index number three uh, the moment i say enter you can see we got three and three so we got the first three because of the loop we got second three because of this method because of this function now that's the advantage you know so when you work with python we got so many functions to work with and it saves your time but knowing how to search manually it will be helpful if you want to create your own algorithm in future so that's it i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section if you have any more questions make sure that you post those questions as well uh, do like the video because that's what motivates me and if you have not subscribed till now do subscribe it so thank you so much for watching everyone Bye bye